In this video lesson, you will learn how to read form data in your Spring MVC web application. To read form data in a method in a controller class, we use model attribute annotation. Let me quickly create a very simple example. So here's my controller class, and I'm going to create a very simple method that uses the model attribute annotation. I will call this method sign up form submit. It will handle HTTP POST request because when form is submitted, we usually use POST method. And I will map it to a forward slash users URI path. I can leave it as is, or to be consistent with my previous examples, I will use path property like this. Now, for this method to read form data using model attribute annotation, I'll need to add model attribute annotation and then bind form data to a Java object, like for example, user. I don't have user class yet, but I'm going to create it in just a few seconds. And now I will return the name of the view page that will be used as a result to display user details after the form is submitted. Let's call it sign up result. All right, so this method will handle HTTP post request that is sent to forward slash users request path. And because it uses model attribute annotation, Spring Framework will try to map form fields into an object of a user class that we're going to create in a few seconds. And because we use model attribute annotation, Spring Framework will also make this user object available as a model in the view. All right, so our Spring MVC view sign up result HTML page will automatically get access to a user object, which is very convenient. Now, in previous lessons, I have shared with you how to use a request param annotation. The good news is that you can also use request param annotation to get request parameters submitted by HTML form. If your form submits only one or two fields, then you can easily use request param annotation to read each of these fields separately. But if your HTML form has many fields, then reading them one by one with request param annotation might not be the best approach. Let's assume that we are creating this method to get form data and display it in a view. I will quickly create a HTML file that contains the form and submits it to this controller. So in the templates folder, I will create a new HTML file and I will call it sign up HTML. I'll give it a title, sign up form maybe, and then I will paste a ready to use HTML form, which is a plain HTML. It is a form that contains a few fields. First name, last name, email, password, repeat password, and submit button. Because this form uses method post, it will submit data as HTTP POST request. And the form data will be submitted to a page available under forward slash users URI path. So now let's create a method in a controller class that handles forward slash users and displays this HTML form. I will go back to my users controller and maybe here I will create a new method. Let's call it sign up form. It will handle HTTP GET request. I will map it to forward slash sign up and it will need to return the name of the view. Let's call it also sign up. All right, so this new method will be triggered when HTTP GET request is sent to a forward slash sign up URI path in the browser and then it will return the name of the view, which is our sign up HTML page. All right, so the sign up is the name of our HTML page that displays HTML form. And we have it here under sign up HTML. Now, when this form is submitted to forward slash users, we need a method in a controller class that will handle this HTTP POST request and will read this form data. And at the beginning of this video lesson, we have already created this method. This is the one, it handles HTTP POST request sent to forward slash users and it reads form data. Because we use model attribute, the form data will be mapped to an object of user class, but we have not created this user class yet. So let's 
do it. I will create a new class. Let's create it in a new package called model. And inside of a new package, I will create a new class. I will call it user.java. Now, a very important moment. Each property name in this user class must match the name of the form field. And if names do not match, Spring Framework will not be able to bind form field to a field in this class. So let's go back to our form and look up the names. First name, last name, email, password, repeat password. I will need to create class fields with exactly same names. So let's do it. And now I will generate getters and setters. So I'll do right mouse click, then select generate, and we'll select getter and setter, select all fields, and we'll generate getter and setter for each of these fields in the class, and we'll save it. Now I'll go back to my controller class, and we'll import this class from a model package of this project. All right, so our user class is ready. Now let's go back to a controller class. We have a method that reads form data, and because we use model attribute annotation, Spring Framework will also make this user object automatically available in the view that is called sign up result. I don't have this view created yet, so let's create a very simple HTML page that displays user details. I will go back to my templates files and I'll create new HTML file and I will call it sign up result. To save time, I will copy and paste a ready HTML page, which is a basic HTML that uses time lift template and it has a header and it displays only three fields. It displays first name by accessing user object from the model and then reading its first name and then a last name and email as well. I do not display user password because we do not usually do it, all right? So now I can save changes and I can run my application and see if it works. So I will select the main application of my project and will do right mouse click and choose run. Now that my application is up and running, I will bring in a new browser window and I will go to localhost port number 8080, sign up and hit enter. And here is my HTML page. It's not very well visible, but this is first name, last name, email, password, repeat password. I will fill it in and will submit. And here is the sign up result. First name, last name, and email address. All right, so everything is working well for us. And you now know how to get form data in your controller using the model attribute annotation.